Here at the Ham Radio Adventures Club Pacific Beach outing, we take safety very seriously. That's why we have two emergency vehicles on standby at all time. And here, we're gonna learn all about these. Uh, all right. It's Nate, NJ7N. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is my rig. Uh, it's named Beulah, which I believe is some language for love or something like that. Um, it's a lovely name. Or uh, for short, I call it the Hambo Beulah Hambob. Beautiful. Uh, it's a 2007 Ford E350 with a 6.0. Uh, low miles, it was Lopez Island here in Washington State. Uh, they wanted to upgrade their rig, put this one in the public market, and then you mentioned emergency vehicles. For insurance, I have to make it clear. It is a RV. <laughs> so, <laughs> so show us but, around, what do, you, what do you got on here? He's got a lot of cool stuff in here. Okay, uh, from the outside, here, obviously the door's open. One of the, the main reasons I wanted it, like they're the same exact width as a regular RV. Uh, they're all aluminum box, so it's all welded. There's no water or there's no wood that can expand and contract with heat and get suck up moisture and just rot. So uh, somehow accidentally found these. Um, one of the cool features, you open the door, scene lights come up on the outside. I changed it, the lights on the inside. Actually, I stole this from Stryker when we get over to his. Um, when you open the door now, red lights come on so you don't wake up people on the inside. Okay, we're going inside. That's a step up. <laughs> it is, we, we left the step at a, at a state park down the beach yesterday, but wow. um, it used to be, there was a cot down the middle. There's, there's storage for days on the inside. It came with an inverter. There's lights and outlets all over the place. I've been changing those out. So like I said, when you open the door, red lights come on and don't wake everybody up. That's awesome. There's a panel on the side. You can switch those over to whites. Cool. But then uh, we built this aluminum extrusion frame with some plywood on here, this. But uh, if I take this off and I'm not sitting on it, I could slide this all the way out, put a piece of plywood in, this becomes a double bed. Oh, nice. Uh, and then the rest of the time, it can be a bench or, or table. Um, words are hard. Yeah. But yeah. So this is this is set up for two people sleep here. My my wife and I, and then my son sleeps on the bench down there. And uh, that's like I said, storage for days. So we have our own lockers for clothes. Yeah. I just got a ginormous 12 volt cooler there too. Sure do. Heck yeah, that's sweet. In the process of upgrading things constantly, uh, we just went and added the MagSafe style chargers over the bed. So when you lay down, you can stick your phone up oh, to no it. Kidding. And then uh, you can get your your uh, ham radio tube YouTube on there and then sit and <laughs> so I got a couple radios in here. I just replaced the it used to be just a little dome light up here and I replaced the whole thing with that 3D printed monstrosity. Oh yeah. The melted broke and then I had to reinforce back up with an aluminum bar behind it, but oh. it's for function, not looks. Well it looks friggin' awesome. Well thanks. That's sweet. So so we got an 891. 891 on an ATOS, and then a FTM 400. That's going, I just had to add a new mount. So ambulances often come with NMO mounts on the roof, but I covered them with solar panels. Uh -huh. So added another one. Uh, the other advantage I got, when they build these things, they put miles and miles of wire in there, not worried about line loss or anything like yeah. that. So I cut out about 50 feet of coax went down to 15 feet from an NMO on top of the box down into the back of the radio, uh -huh. which is, I don't you know if you can see. Right Here, yeah. Put both the radios on the back of a molly board that just straps to the back of the seat. And then I zip tied them down to that and then ran, uh, there's a remote speaker for the FTM 400 up in the dash. The 500 still loose back there somewhere. Oh, but, you got uh, a bunch of big batteries down here too. Look sure do, and some donuts. What you got going on there? Uh, I got 600 amp hours of LiPo 4s. Oh, wow. The, uh, that, the charge controller, the Renogy? Yeah, so that's a DC-DC charger. Oh, okay. I might ask you to put blurries over my wiring or something. I don't know. I'm not an electrician. <laughs> but don't it's worry. a... They've seen me wire things, so don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> it's a 60 amp DC-DC charger, so it'll take input from the alternator or from solar. Uh -huh. um, it's not currently hooked up to solar because they, I've got too many panels for what that can handle. Okay. Uh, but it'll, I'll charge, like I said, up to 60 amps. I, I usually see closer to 45 amps uh -huh. charging, driving down the road. Sweet. But that'll last me like four or five days. The, oh, yeah. the radios are constantly running off of it. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Uh, we close the doors. Yeah. <clears throat> 
I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up. It's all refraction. Refraction? Uh, sure. But uh, that got rid of all my blind spots, and that's running off of these batteries oh, cool. 24 hours a day. So it's, so. A, it's, a, it's a rear view mirror, but it's a camera, because I don't think my camera is picking this up very well. Probably not. Um, but yeah, it's that actually side views, so they're up here on the front fenders. Oh, they're side views? Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, I can barely see it here. So you can see what we can see yeah. is the edge of the vehicle here, and then this side of the screen, it's left and right. Uh -huh. This side of the screen is almost straight out the door. Oh, wow. So I can see all the way around it now, and then, like I said, that's since it's running on the house batteries, it's constantly on, so it's like a security thing. People come up to start looking, hey, what you got inside that yeah. thing? There's, they can see they're being recorded constantly That's off the side. Slick. So it's like a little home security, but for the, Just for the van. More of a deterrent, but yeah. yeah. You gotta rock the ATOS. How do you like using the ATOS? Uh, I don't know why I would consider anything else, honestly. Yeah. Just throw it on, as long as you get the connection correctly the first time, because I'm not always great at that. <laughs> But uh, get the connection right the first time, and then it just works. Yep. And yes, it does. It's fantastic. I've talked. I don't think I've gone quite around the world because usually I set up in a park and I'll set up yeah. something a little bit bigger. But I've talked across the states with no issues on oh, it. Yeah. Another testament to the greatness of the ATOS. Oh, I got yeah. the super signal stick up there too. I forgot the name of it, but signal stick makes that. It's an NMO big one. That two meter antenna. Yeah, dual bander. Oh, look at that. I had no idea. So there you go, signal stick on top. Uh, I got a locker here. This one's probably safe to open. And then I say that <laughs> and it'll leap out. But uh, like a floor rug, a bunch of chairs. Yeah. It's also tall enough. I'll put in some uh, spider beam mast. I think I got a, I got a pack 10 of mast in there right now. Nice. And then all the whips. Um, four wheel drive conversion, which uh, it was a custom shop did that. So it's all, it's either F-350 or F-450 running gear. Uh -huh. um, so I can go down to Napa and get most of the parts for maintenance. In here, I replaced the stock inverter with a Renogy 3000 amp inverter charger. So I've got power, I can, I can run a Keurig. Uh, and then there's <laughs> cassette toilet, and then there's all the outside stuff. I just, uh, I had a sliding camper before and it was kind of miserable. Um, anytime you, Went to go camping, like the first stop's always down at the grocery store, load up the cooler, but you can't load the cooler because all your crap's on the floor. Yeah. And you're p climbing over that. So now I've got all my outdoor stuff outside. Nice. Uh, this one is a mess, but I'm proud of it, so we'll see. <laughs> um, oh, a gazelle, nice. I don't know what they did. Yeah, you might know a guy that sold me on that. There's, <laughs> i addicted to this group of people on YouTube that make me spend money. Yeah, I understand. Um, but yeah. Tall stuff got stored in here. I'm super excited about this. I just switched from a mini Traeger to uh, refillable one pound bottles. That's a PVC oh, cool. pipe I cut out and now I can store them all stacked. That's slick, dude. And then uh, the top one's obviously used so you just put it back in upside down. Yeah. You, can, you can track it, but every two bottles you can pull it straight out the side. Nice. There's a uh, Wolf River coil. Oh yeah, look at that. Dude, and that would rock out my here. My awesome stick from Guam. In the back, I've got swing outs for the spare tire with a spider beam mounted to the back of that. So I that's that. always ready to deploy. Um, if I'm not running the ATOS, I'll usually put a Pactena end fed on this and run it all the way up. And by the time it goes up and curves, I'll take like a one foot adapter from BNC to PL259, take the ATOS off, put it right back on the same one. Yeah. So I'm already resonant and it's straight up vertical off the front. So yeah. now I'm a mobile Pactena. Beautiful. And then uh, there's a hammock. The mount down there goes in the hitch. I actually... I got Blackstone here. I do. Nice. Uh, and it swings out, so I had hitches put on the side of the bumper too, so things like the, the hammock and all the other accessories you get that are designed for hitches, I can mount them right on the side. That's sweet. When you go camping, you don't camp out the back of a vehicle, you camp off the side. So then this, the Blackstone swings out. Locks in place there. There's a 270 right, awning up cool. on top that swings out and covers everything so you can, and it, the awning goes all the way across that door so you can come oh, out wow. of it, out here, cook without going into the rain or sun or yeah. anything. So that's kind of it. That's awesome, thanks man. Oh, thank you. So that was cool. Now let's check out another one. Oh, hey. Name and call sign. This is the bringer of the Malort, by the way. He is the devil. 
Hi, it's and me. I appreciate that. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> now, this is Stryker K7 International Bitterness Units here. Let's go take a look at Travis, my ambulance. It is not near as done as I want, and I'm still kind of working. There's some stuff in there that I kind of threw up there just to get it functional. In addition to being a ham radio vehicle or ridiculous radio adventures vehicle, this is our family camper. This is our utility vehicle. We move plywood in the rain. This is our 4-H vehicle. So we have mini Nubians that my kids show. And then in addition to that, we also have a couple of bunks in there. The bed situation, it is made out of, uh, it's electrician's material, it's construction material, Unistrut. So I uh, got a bunch of Unistrut and made a couple of platforms that fold out from the wall. So let's go check it out. Not near as much of a step as Nate's ambulance. His oh, yeah. is lifted about six inches. He's got a nice handle here too. It got a nice handle there and not a bunch of stuff to knock off on the door. So um, this one is probably not gonna see a four wheel drive conversion. It is longer, it is wider, and it's not near as agile. And after Nate's experience of saying that the lift and the solid axle conversion up front made the handling worse, I can't imagine <laughs> making this thing worse driving or more top heavy. It's already that good. It's, it's already that fantastic. It's like sailing. I also drive a Jeep TJ and it's not near as bad as a lifted Jeep TJ and it's uh -huh. not near as bad as pointing it in a direction and suggesting which way to steer, but it's a, it's a little floaty. What I've done so far is all the cabinetry that's right here, I've actually pulled that out and I replaced it with a couple of bunks for my kids. So these are the mattresses that they'll sleep on. Uh, got storage down below, have a bunch of Harbor Freight boxes we can just throw down there. And then over on this side, this is that Unistrut bed that I was talking about. So it actually folds down from the wall. And if it's just me doing radio stuff, this is actually the leg down here. And it okay. is a level platform. And then if it's the wife and I, this actually fits a full size mattress, which that's what this pad is right here. Uh -huh. It folds out all the way. And then I have a couple of legs that go down and then a couple of supports in the center. That's and then awesome. we just have some of the existing cabinetry from the ambulance itself. Instead of holding medical supplies, I mean, we got an AeroPress, um, paper towels, some reading material, other various supplies in here, dog leash that we've been looking for. The storage down here, air mattress, blankets. Had a couple of sleeping bags in there, but those actually went over to another trailer that we have that we actually took out for the salmon run, the Washington State Cuso oh, party. On, before we go out there, another 12 volt cooler. <laughs> yep, that's the uh, IBU containment unit. <laughs> IBU containment unit. I love it. Keeps them uh, cold and charged. And then there's the pantry. Yep. Love it. That's freaking awesome, dude. So that is one of the fantastic things about ambulances is all of the storage. Yeah. It comes at it's a cost. It's almost like they planned it that way. Yes, and, and the, the big thing is external storage. It's kind of a pain because sometimes you're like, oh, it's in the cabinet outside, I have to go get that. But it's also, if you're at a situation like this and you're at the beach. Imagine just, yeah. You have you know, a, some sandy chairs. Camping, and then you're at the beach. Look how freaking cool. This is so cool. Yep, yeah, just open it up. So like yesterday we went out, we did a poda on the beach and uh, got sand in the chairs, got sand on the table, just threw them in the locker. If I oh, fill yeah. this thing full of sand, it's got a mat in the bottom, I'll just take the shop back to it when I get home. Yeah. So but, you, this is new or new to you? New to me. So I noticed there's a lack of uh, ham radio equipment inside. What are your plans for getting that going um so right now yeah it's pretty non-existent while i'm moving i have two meter and 440 okay there is a tri-band antenna up top it's oh, you do two, have something up top yep it's just a little stubby guy it's actually made for ambulances so it's okay. got a big spring on the bottom of it on so top? when you hit low clearance stuff it'll just fold over and bend back uh, it is yeah. two 440 and a 900 megahertz. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the 900 side, but <laughs> I would like to use that. Yeah. Maybe try to fudge some Laura into there and maybe oh, yeah. get a triplex or something along those lines. Yeah. But uh, as for ham radio aspirations, what I would love to do is this cabinet right here is just about the perfect size for a pneumatic mast. 
pop a hole in oh, the top. Yeah. Put a pneumatic mast right here. We know here. a guy with experience with pneumatic mast. I, I'm definitely going to take a tape measure to that and, <laughs> and measure Dude, to see if that would work. That would be, that would trump James's mast. I don't want to trump anyone. I think we all have <laughs> different equipment that works in different ways. And together we make awesome mobile stations. Um, that would be the HF side. The cabinet for the control board on the inside, um, I would like to modify that and redo a little bit of the electronics. I would eventually like to do home assistant, put a relay board in there and fix the way or uh, change the way that some of the lights work on the outside. So if you open doors, the scene lights come on. If you're in a campground, that's not necessarily something you want all the time because they're yeah. bright floodlights. Um, would like to do something where, you know, we, we could do red lights, do night vision, so that way you're not attracting mosquitoes. Um, but I would like to do SDRs in there, and then you would have Wi-Fi in here, and you can connect to the SDR over Wi-Fi, and you could operate inside the Faraday cage. Might be able to put a, an access point on the outside, so you still have connectivity, because that's one of the big things. You're in a big aluminum box, so if you go in here with a cell phone, or if you go in here with an HT, it severely cuts down on your ability to get out or, or receive. So the big ham radio aspirations are that for the HF side, pneumatic mast, we'll see if that happens. Um, if not, um, you know, a spider beam, what I typically do for POTA. Yeah. You can actually see some of the evidence right here. I just take the uh, 10 meter spider beam, pop it in right here, let it hang over oh, with yeah. a uh, Pactena run the coax through the window, sit in the action seat and play with my 891 if it's raining, or maybe I'll come out here on the uh, uh, on a, uh, a folding table if it's not, and, and operate that way. But uh, pneumatic mast definitely would be good. For the VHF UHF side, I am planning to install an FTM 500. Okay. I have one. I have a way to remote mount it. I need to find a way to remote mount the head up front on the control station where yeah. all the, the buttons are. But until I find a way to do that, I've just been using the Vero for the time being. Uh, another thing I want to do is I want to pop a hole in between the, behind where the driver sets and where that control cabinet is and just run 12 volt directly off of the uh, the large gauge, wire, gauge wires that are coming off that panel. And that way you don't have to worry about undervolting anything or, or anything like that. So. I would like to do a little bit of a suspension lift. I did get tires on the rear because they were all mismatched and one was leaking. So I figured with 12,000 pounds and my kids riding in it, probably best to have tires that aren't going to explode on you. <laughs> um, I'll probably do the fronts here next couple of months or so. Those are what came on it. I might go just a little bit wider up front uh, just to give it a little bit more surface area because it's nice having the width for the duels in the back. It is a, it's a useful vehicle. I mean, a lot of people look at it and like, that's dumb. Why would you buy that? But it's a great utility vehicle. You can move things in the rain and it doesn't get wet. You can use it as an RV. And as Nate was pointing out, if you buy an RV, they're made out of styrofoam and particle board and they are designed to basically implode on themselves so you buy a new one. This was designed to save lives. It is not light, but it is made out of aluminum sheeting and two by two aluminum uh, square tube. So it was designed to be durable. It was designed to not fail on you when you need it. It comes at a cost of weight. It comes at a cost of terrible fuel mileage, but you also know that it's not gonna fall apart on you within the next decade. All of the compartments are lit. So if you open the door, there's a light in all of them so you can see what's going on. Got to have your fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. I'm not as cool as Nate and I don't have an AED, but that might happen in the future. <laughs> um, there's that pantry, the fridge, and being case of an IBU, you always have to have your secondary IBU containment unit. Nice. Yep. But yeah, it's a cool rig. I really like it and I appreciate you guys checking it out with Heck me. Yeah, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing with us. Yeah. It's awesome. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.